At first glance, this might look like interpersonal communication, but look again, it's intrapersonal communication. That's communication within yourself. We all do this. We all think about these kind of things. So everything you do and say and behave like starts with self-talk. Convincing yourself to get up in that morning, get that cup of coffee, and head out to the day for school or work. Right? Your self-concept is extremely important. It's the view you have of yourself. It determines what you will say and how you will say things, to whom you will say things as well. Right? Do you express self-love? Do you accept yourself and your faults and your skills? And if they're a problem, not yours. If you think about things that way, that if they don't like you, it's their loss, not yours. So your cognitive processing for your sort of intrapersonal communication centers around these three things. Your values. So what has positive or negative worth? So maybe it's your religion, maybe it's love, maybe it's something else that you value above all other things. What about your attitudes, your predispositions? What things do you like and dislike? Do you like a good sense of humor? Or do you like someone who's very serious all the time? What do you actually really believe in? What are your convictions? So what will you defend to your death, maybe. The idea of cognitive dissonance comes into involved with intrapersonal intra communication. So it's an imbalance between your values, attitudes, and beliefs. So let's say you, have, uh, you and another person are going for a job and you decide to sabotage her job so you could get a promotion. What do you think as you sort of sit in that corner office after sort of throwing that other person under the bus? You have some cognitive dissonance going on. So you think, wow, I deserve this, and what she got, she got, she deserved. But at the same time, you're thinking, maybe I cheated, maybe I don't deserve this. Also makes me think about my tennis matches uh, my son used to be involved in in high school. There were no umpires or linesmen or referees at these matches, so the team would call the ball in or out. And I went to several matches where the other team called the ball out when it was clearly in. So maybe you won the point, or you won the game, or you won the match. But what about how were you feeling afterwards? Did you really win it? Or did you cheat in order to win it? The whole idea of cognitive dissonance. That leads to what's called the guilty conscience. And we've all had that before. We said something we didn't mean to say and we wish we could take it back. It happens a lot. So you need to know how to deal with that. So how do you resolve that? So think about ways you've resolved this cognitive dissonance in the past. So let's put everything on the self right now. So you've got a real self. When you look in the mirror, you see all your faults, your skills, and everything else. There's an ideal self, maybe something we're always striving for, to be better, to treat people better, treat ourselves better. What about the public self? So maybe out in public we're extroverted and really sort of talkative, but when we're home alone we're very introverted and kind of shy. What about your spiritual side? What are you thinking and feeling? What about possessions and how important are possessions for you and your surroundings? What about your social interactions and making connections with other people? And what about your physical sort of self, your well-being, your health? All those kind of things all play into how we communicate and when we communicate. So this is the Jahari window, and it's sort of got the four different panels that you can look at. So the one that's known to others and known to self, so that's your open panel. So other people see this in you, and you see this in yourself. Some people, though, have a blind spot, or most people have a blind spot, where they don't know what's going on, but other people see that. How about the hidden window? The hidden window is what's known to, not known to others or known to self, but it is known to self. These are things you keep to yourself you don't share with anybody, your innermost secrets and private thoughts. And then there's the unknown, where you don't know about it and no other, no other person knows about it as well. So think about the Jahari window and sort of where you are in those different panels. Intrapersonal communication also sort of deals with Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So once you get past the physical survival needs and you sort of aim for self-actualization, where you fall on this pyramid probably changes day by day or maybe even hour by hour. So sometimes your sort of self-actualization doesn't occur and you're sort of just struggling to get that assignment in and trying to sort of be safe and secure in what you're doing. Right? So that also has an influence on how you sort of deal with other people. Another thing that's dealing with intrapersonal communication is anxiousness and communication apprehension. So many of you are going to be a little apprehensive about giving a speech. So there's real sort of ways you can sort of deal with that. There is drug therapy, which is kind of off the slide that you really can't see. Um, but there's also skill training desensitization, where you sort of do it little pieces of things. Right? As I mentioned, skill training. You're taking this class, so hopefully at the end of this semester you'll be a better speaker than you were at the beginning. And there's also cognitive modifications. So again, rehearsing and imagining positive interactions, imagining a positive performance, oftentimes helps you lead to a better performance. So that's intrapersonal communication.
next we'll tackle interpersonal communication.